Hey everyone, it's Fresno Monty here. Now in today's comparison review, I will be reviewing two video editing products that are aimed at both consumers and professionals in the video editing market. The first of which is Adobe's Premiere Pro, and the second of which is Apple's Final Cut Pro. Final Cut Pro X, that is. So, I've explained enough, let's just get to the review. The first aspect I want to compare between the two programs is their user interfaces. As you can see from this screenshot, Final Cut Pro X's user interface is incredibly easy to use and uncluttered, as opposed to this screenshot of Adobe Premiere Pro's, which, as you can see, is very, very cluttered. Now, the reason why Apple chose to make Final Cut Pro X's user interface a lot easier to get around than the previous version of Final Cut Pro, which was Final Cut Pro 7, is so that they could get into it easier, they could learn how to use it easier, and so that they wouldn't be intimidated by such a complex interface. Now, in Adobe Premiere Pro's case, Adobe chose to keep the interface cluttered because it is ma mainly aimed at professionals. Final Cut Pro X is also aimed at professionals, but the user interface has been simplified at a deficit, which I will talk about later on. So if you want a program with an easy to use interface that you don't want to have to learn how to use, Final Cut Pro X would be better. But if you're not intimidated by a complex interface and you don't care about the learning curve, then Premiere Pro is better. The deficit that I was talking about on Final Cut Pro brings me on to the next section of review, which is talking about the editing and exporting features. Now, as many people know, Final Cut Pro X was panned heavily upon its release for its lack of features and lack of export options. If you take a look at the user interface, you probably won't think that there are too many features in the program. And, on any day, you'd be right, because Final Cut Pro has far less features than Final Cut Pro 7 did which, you know, is why reviews were very, very low. Premiere Pro, however, has a plethora of features, which is why it's aimed at professionals, and will provide you with anything you need to create a good-looking video. But the editing tools would be nothing without the ability to export your final video. Now, in Final Cut Pro X, there is also a problem. I believe there are only around 20 or so export options for your videos. There's also the problem in Final Cut Pro which comes with when you create the project to make your video there are a number of different options that it should have to change the resolution, the frame rate, the pixel aspect ratio, etc. The video system, like NTSC or PAL, which are present in Premiere Pro. However, Final Cut Pro X does not have this, which is again why the reviews are generally low. Seeing that Final Cut Pro X cannot export or import any really customizable options, and Apple was trying to aim at professionals, professionals aren't going to buy it, which is why they go for Premiere Pro, because it has much more customization for projects, and it has much more customization for export. You can customize pretty much everything upon export and import in Premiere Pro, plus Final Cut Pro abolished the idea of track editing, the idea of layering tracks upon each other, where the tracks had different types, it could be an audio track or it could be a video track, and you could assign different tracks for different purposes, such as sound effects, music, narration, video, overlay, visual effects, that kind of thing. Instead, Final Cut Pro X went with layer editing, which people are getting kind of annoyed about, because it makes navigating between the clips and arranging them a bit more difficult, plus it uh, seems a bit too much like Photoshop, which is what Adobe made, so maybe considered a Photoshop ripoff. Having said that, Premiere Pro still has the idea of track editing, and I like it a lot more than the layer editing. So, in terms of editing tools, Premiere Pro. The last part of this review is me talking about the customization of these two programs. Now, based on what I've said about Final Cut Pro X so far, you might be thinking, hmm, not gonna buy it, not a good program. But when Final Cut Pro X is partnered with Motion, which is a visual effects program that Apple makes, similar to Adobe's After Effects, it can be pretty much unstoppable with customization because you can create customized titles, transitions, generators, and effects within Motion and import them all into Final Cut Pro. And because of all the tools available in Motion, this makes the possibilities for customizations absolutely endless within Final Cut Pro. So there's pretty much no stopping you creating whatever you want for Final Cut Pro if you choose to buy Motion. With Premiere Pro, the main way of customization is by downloading presets that people have made online. The way of creating these presets is a lot more complex than how you do it in Final Cut Pro, and for that reason, and the fact that Premiere Pro plugins usually cost money, whereas Final Cut Pro X ones are free if you make them, I will go with Final Cut Pro for customization. Now that the review is over, I'm going to talk about the main thing that people are going to be wondering 
with these two programs, which is how much do they cost? I'm going to reveal to you right now that Final Cut Pro X can only be found on the Mac App Store and retails for £199.99 or $299.99 if you are overseas. £200 I think is quite a bit too much to ask for a video editing program of its calibre. However, Motion, which is the program I talked about earlier, can be bought for an additional £35. And I forgot to mention this earlier, but Compressor, which can um, be used to customise export and import settings for Final Cut Pro, can be bought for an additional £35. Now back to how much Final Cut Pro was asking for, if you do want those extra import and export options in the form of Compressor, don't bother, because Compressor costs just as much as Motion does, and it still uses 32-bit architecture, which means it can't use more than 4GB of RAM in any one computer, which basically means that it's pretty slow. And £270 is a bit too much to ask for a full video editing and visual effects package of the calibre that Apple has produced. Adobe Premiere Pro, on the other hand, costs marginally more than Final Cut Pro X. And when I say marginally more, I mean a hell of a lot more. Because Premiere Pro on its own costs £500 from Adobe.com. That's also $800 if you're overseas. Now, Premiere Pro also retails in a package that Adobe makes called the Production Premium Package, which costs £1,200 here in the UK, or $1,799 if you are overseas. Now, when you first see the price of that, you'll think, oh my goodness, I'm a, only a consumer or a prosumer. I don't have that much money to buy a video editing system. What on earth am I going to do? Well, Adobe has something called student pricing in which you can buy an edition which is intended for student and teacher kind of interaction. It's, it's an 80% off deal, and that retails, I think, at only around about £350, and I can't be able to convert that into dollars right now. So that's a much more reasonable option if you are going to get Premiere Pro. Now the production premium pack does come with other programs such as After Effects, which is good for visual effects uh, when it interacts with Premiere Pro, Photoshop and Illustrator, which is good for creating graphics. So I would say that if you do want Premiere Pro at a good value, I would go with the student pricing of the production premium package. However, if you still think that Final Cut Pro is too expensive for you, I don't even know why you would think of buying it right now, I would say that there is no student pricing for Final Cut Pro X, unfortunately you're going to have to live with the £270 it's asking for. I would probably only play £100 for everything included, motion, compressor and Final Cut Pro tops. But I've got Final Cut Pro X and motion, so I wasted my money basically. I shouldn't have. So now that I've slated Final Cut Pro X and praised Premiere Pro for how much stuff there is in it, I'm going to say that if you are a consumer and you're looking for a simple video editing system, I would not go with Final Cut Pro X, I would look at something that is a little bit lower down than that, that maybe averages around the £50 mark. However, if you are a professional and you're looking for a fast, slick, plenty of features and plenty of export options editing system, go with Adobe Premiere Pro, it is easily the best editing system out on the market right now. Some people say Avid Media Editor is, you know, above that, but that costs far more than Premiere Pro, and Premiere Pro already costs a lot as it is. So, if you're a professional, I would go with Premiere Pro. So that's it for this comparison review. Thanks very much for watching, everyone. If you liked the video, please click the like button down below. If you've got something to let me know, leave a comment below. And as always, subscribe if you feel the vibe. This is Frasmoticus saying, staring at a camera very awkwardly, Goodbye.